Welcome to the Sunday Brunch Series, where girl talk has never felt better. We're bringing that brunch and chill therapeutic vibe straight to your ears. I'm sitting down with a few of my friends to talk all things womanhood. Grab your cozy blanket, tuck in, and let's have a girl chat. Welcome back for another episode of the Lovish Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Sita Hood, vision architect and licensed therapist. If you are listening to this episode, I'm going to need you to come on back over to my YouTube channel because we are still sitting down with my homegirls for the last and final part of this series, the Sunday Brunch series. So come on back down, have a seat and chat with us. So last week, we talked a lot about relationships and uh, values and relationships and alignment and how really, I think if we are all in consensus that none of us are subscribed to cut off culture, yes, mm-hmm. right, we, we know how to be cordial to people, mm-hmm. basically, unless, of course, there's a very clear reason to cut off the yeah. relationship. You gotta be exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. But for the most part, none of us subscribe to cut off culture. So uh, we were just talking about relationships and friendships and all the things in between. So we're going to jump right back on into our discussion. So we're going to jump back in. Um, Lana, can you share an experience where your support system played a crucial role in your personal growth? Yeah, I have had you know, a lot of things, you know, going on in my life. I feel like one situation I had, I feel like a lot of my support system really came and was there for me. I feel like I had people coming and visiting me. I had, you know, parents who's my biggest supporters, my parents and my Aww, husband. Shout out to y'all <laughs> for rentals. We love you. <laughs> my parents were making sure that like, I was good in this situation and I just felt, I really felt love. And usually I'm the one that is going and like Mm -hmm. making sure people are okay and making sure they're good and checking up on them. So it did feel good like that people were kind of now showing that love back to me. And those are just like my crucial support system, my crucial people in my life. And they know who they are. I definitely let them know that I appreciate it. They love. And that's like a big thing to me. When people do stuff for me, I make sure that I reciprocate and let them know like. That's some service. Really good, (laughs) good about it. <laughs> so any like uh ahas or personal realizations that came from that because obviously it sucks but in adversity we all grow mm-hmm. hopefully <laughs> hopefully <laughs> we have a choice right i think um the realization was the type of support mm-hmm. i was receiving from certain people because certain people would, you know, they were giving me support. They would, you know, say something, you know, sorry, whatever it may be. You want me to help you, blah, blah, blah. And then there was some people that were there and they would check on you even, you know, a month down the road, two months down the road. Mm-hmm. And then there's some people that like just check on you like the day of. And they're just like, oh, sorry. And then it's like pretty. Is that really a check on though? I mean, that's just me. That, that, that's that was the realization. Okay. <laughs> That was the realization that some people, and I don't know if it's like some people just don't know how to be supportive or what support looks like because some people just don't have that and they don't know what it looks Mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. Or if it was just a like, you know, oh, I checked on her, I did my portion. That was it. That's all I needed to do. Some people would be a no. Come on now. Right. Talk about it. Right. I would say even with that, like I checked on her, I did my part. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I hate that thought process because that's the, I think, clearest indicator that you are not actually invested in a relationship like you say you are. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and we could be talking about something small, large, whatever, like somebody car breaking down at 10 o'clock at night on expressway. And you find out about it. You're like, oh my gosh, are you okay? And then you don't check in after that. <laughs> you're just yeah. like, well, I did my part. She's fine. Mm-hmm. Or not even calling or texting the next day. And keeping in mind that like, obviously we're busy. We have lives. We do stuff. So it's very possible to forget. But when you remember. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And that's the whole thing. It's like, you know, I expect people to be all in my face when you know do need the support when when I need support from different friends or you know whatever or my relationships. I just I guess maybe what I do like I feel like 
I check on people and, you know, if, if you need anything. Sometimes the people say, you know, no, I don't need nothing, but I'll still be like, well, I'm going to send them something. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, I'm going to go and check on them or whatever, or whatever it may be. And I feel like that's when you really show people like you really need them. Yeah, so you... You made me think of another question and I'm going to open up to all of us. Is like, I know we talk about strong women, black women being strong all the time. I'm specifically talking to us at this table. Do you think that you do a good job of saying when you need support from people? No, I don't. I know I don't. I don't. I don't. <laughs> okay, so what keeps us from doing that? Because we'd be knowing that we need it, but why won't you say it? Because I'm sure I like to do it myself sometimes. Okay. I need to just do it. You know, I know that it's going to get done when I want it done. I know that it's going to get done how I want it to get done. So sometimes it's harder to ask the question because then you got to explain how you want it done and how you need it and what you need. It's like this is more than I just I can do it. Or let's say if it's something where you find yourself in a situation. You got to sometimes explain to people how you got yeah. in that situation yeah. in order for them to help you. Yeah. Well, with that, I don't want people in my bed. Sticky is about that bed. Don't be in my bed. Don't play with it. I'm not even close to my husband. I'm not even close to my mother. I know regardless of what it is, if it's a financial thing, if it's a mental thing, a marriage thing, my mother, I feel like she had, she could do it all. You gotta go all sister. So, we see you out here. <laughs> we need to take classes from her because we all got daughters. I think you know how to be that kind of mama. <laughs> yeah, she can do it all. She can help me financially. She can help me in any way, and it's no problem. To be honest with you, I really don't. I do explain myself, but I really don't have to explain myself. It's mm-hmm. already yeah. there. So, and then at the same time, when you're running my business, because and then, to be honest with you, even if they you think somebody's your friend, some people want to see your downfall. Ooh. Yeah, true. So you tell somebody your business, and they'd be like, you know, they, I don't know what. I mean, just from experience, yeah. I'm not just talking no, about what true. I think. I'm talking from experience. It just people want to see you fail. So it, even people that you thought was close to you, yeah. So you just tell people your business. It's just like I knew she was on, you know, she wasn't doing all, you know, whatever the case mm-hmm. may be. So I just don't want people. I just rather just like, no, I'm good. I, the only person I could reach out to is me, so Lord. Wonderful man. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, and that's fair. And I'm saying that obviously, you know, we're not about to go into detail on the podcast, but I understand what got you to that point, right? Mm-hmm. I understand the level of betrayal and all of that that got you to that point where you like, mm mm, I'm calling my mama. That's it. All right, my husband marked up. So. <laughs> 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 okay, so Vicky, how has faith influenced your approach to relationships and love in general? So story time. Okay. So uh I don't know if you remember, you invited me to uh um, woman's time. This is about me. <laughs> yeah. It's about you and your mother in law. And you invited me to a woman's time. I think I've been to your uh, your mother in law's church, Women's Conference, I believe, probably twice. Mm-hmm. And this was around the time when I think I don't know if I was pregnant with my with my second daughter, Maya. I don't know if I was pregnant with her. I just had her, but me and Martel was going through a you know big mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. And I went to a women's conference, and I can't really it's, it's kind of glory of what she preached about, but I just remember to this day. God was just literally working with me. It was a lot of stuff I was going through. I didn't want to be there. I was. It was a lot of heaviness on me. Yeah. And um, probably that was probably the first five years of our marriage. And you know, of course, the first the first yeah. ten years is the roughest Child. years. So, <laughs> so I went there, and I don't know exactly what she was preaching on, but it, I mean, I was getting beat up, literally beat up, and. I remember she asked the deacons or the ministers to come to her friends, like a little altar call. Mm -hmm. And I just remember God guiding me to the front. That when I was getting pulled to the front, of course, you know, me being, trying to be, holding everything together, Mm -hmm. trying to act, you know, but I knew God was trying to pull me to the front. Mm -hmm. 
to get prayed for. I think yeah, she was, you know, they wanted to pray for people. Of course, I needed the prayer. And I went to the front, and I don't know the lady that I went to, but God literally directed me to this lady. As soon as I got to her, I just bawled out crying on her mm-hmm. shoulder. Literally bawled. This literally couldn't even hold it together. I was just weak. Mm-hmm. And one thing and how I know God literally was talking to me through her and she prophesied. And I still, I don't, we, we exchanged numbers out there. Mm-hmm. It happened after mm-hmm. she prophesied over my life. But she said one thing to me that stood to me to this day. She said, if you come, God said, if you come, he will follow. Mm-hmm. Now, I never, I don't know this lady. I didn't know where that came from. Mm-hmm. Nobody knew, even you didn't know what was going on. Nobody knew what I was going through or anything. And that's when I knew, like, dang it. Mm-hmm. Now, I was going to church, but I feel like I was just playing church. Because, mm-hmm. like, you know, we all was made to go to church, yeah, yeah. to every day, <laughs> fellowship meeting, yeah. uh, revival, <laughs> all day Sunday, Tuesday, Tuesday Friday. Friday. So, Wednesday, if your mama was in the choir. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was like, I, I'm from, I was raised up in church, and I just know to go to church. You go to church on Sunday, okay? Mm-hmm. Even though I was growing, I'm like, you know, but I was just playing church. But when she said this, like, dang, woman. <laughs> like, <laughs> and it hit me because it's like, and that's what made me even cry more. I just literally wanted to pass out because it was like, oh, my goodness. I knew that was God. Mm-hmm. So, and ever since that happened, I just tried to do the right thing. I was just, I wasn't playing no more. I was like, you know, I got to mm-hmm. build a relationship with God. I got to do the right thing. Because mm-hmm. to be honest with you, anybody know me, I just want to do the right thing. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, that worked. Because Martel, we were, we were like night and day. I was raised in church. He didn't have to go to church. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He don't know. He don't know in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth at that time. Mm-hmm. So. Him and he was going to church, but he didn't really know the basics. So, you know, he just know to go and listen mm-hmm. to the pastor, whatever the case may be. But it just helped my marriage and my faith got stronger. And me just uh reading, you know, just building my relationship with God, my relationship with God, not nobody else's relationship. Mm-hmm. And he did follow. Now he pushes me when I want to go to a uh, women's prayer meeting. He'd be like, babe, get up. Did you want to go to the women's prayer meeting at the church? Oh, you know, he wow. pushes so me. So <laughs> and we push each other. It's not just him pushing me. He, mm-hmm. We push each other. But it just, ever since that day, I was like, okay. You said it. Okay. Now I got to be the example because we all are example. Right. We all are example. We don't know who we are stopping from reaching God or even should getting married or children, whatever the case mm-hmm. may be, you you know, you are there. But, you know, we all have different things and we're around people. God put us around those people to have a relationship with him. And, you know, sometimes we stop that. But it was just me being an example so he could see me and be like, dang, you know, let me get myself together. Let me start going to church. Let me build a relationship with God. So it just happened. So that's why my I feel like my faith did also got stronger, but my faith also helped me with my relationship with my husband, my children, mm-hmm. even Prisha, me, what I, who I choose to be around. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, how am I able to uh, face rejection? Like everything. It just got faith. It just helped me through it all. Because you know? lucky, I feel like we used to be around and we used to be very messy. Mm-hmm. If we being for real, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, it depends like, on what you define as messy. What you I mean, as messy? <laughs> I ain't talking about sleep with nobody bad and nothing like that. But when I say messy, I mean like talking about people. I mean yeah, like you thing. know, a little bitter and stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean starting fights with folks. I mean you know, just real messy, real petty. Not necessarily where we are now, where it's like, okay, I believe everybody's sitting at this table. When we come into a situation, we want to do, like you say, the right thing. Mm -hmm. What's best for us? What has our growth, you know, in mind, Mm -hmm. but also doesn't hurt the person? Mm -hmm. That ain't how we (laughs) used to be. That ain't how I used to be. But it's, it depends on who you're around because mm-hmm. it depends on who you choose to be in your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because the people around you are supposed to motivate you to do the right thing. 
True. You know, like I'm not finna have y'all and if I'm out with you, I'm not finna have you say we single. You know, so we're trying to <laughs> holler at you. I'm not finna have you go in to the bathroom with this dude. You know, so I'm not finna right, allow you right, to do certain right. things. That's protective. You know, prote- I'm gonna be very protective. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so it just you know But these standards these days are different. Yeah. They be like, girl, why you block them? Okay. <laughs> well as for us in this house, <laughs> we don't do that. We don't do that. And you know, maybe we consider kind of partial old heads to some people now, but like I feel like that's still a standard in friendship. You know, like I do believe that there are some people out there now that would uh still agree with us. That's like young girls that would still be like, No, I'm not gonna let my friends go out like that. Yeah, yeah that's true. And that's just how it is, you know? So well, at least for us. So, um, Amber, how do you balance your personal needs with the needs of your relationship? Um, when it comes to balance, first of all, that's something that I'm still working on mm-hmm. and learning in this season of my life. But I would say being in my 30s now, I feel like I'm learning more about what I need and what makes me happy, what brings me joy, what triggers me. I feel anxious, you know. I mean, no, you know, you're real loud. You're real loud. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, just, you know, poor kids, uh, household, working mm. mom, mm. Uh, marriage, all of that, being married for well, like going on nine years. He said the first okay, 10 years. Okay, okay. Uh, the first 10 years. I'm, I'm in that, sure. you know, I'm in that. So mm-hmm. the balance part, I'm definitely figuring it out, but it goes back to just like now I'm knowing what what do I need? What triggers me? And then those expectations that I'm setting with my friends and my family, they know. They're clear on like, okay, yeah, she can't handle too much at once. Or let me not talk to her while she's doing five different things. Uh, I answer the phone. Hey, I'm doing this right now. Okay, just we'll talk, we'll talk later. I don't know. It's just I think we all just kind of pick up on what each other needs. And then when it comes to just, you know, my friends, my family, my whoever, doing the same for them. So, okay. Yeah. So it sounds like boiled down to knowing your friends, yeah. knowing your relationships, knowing the people that you connected to because mm-hmm. you can sense when it's the time for what. Yeah, basically. You got it. Okay. So, Lana, what's been the most challenging part of maintaining relationships while you're going through your own kind of personal growth? season. I definitely have been making a lot of personal growth changes in my life probably within the last year. And I feel like within that year, the relationships that I was able or the friendships that I was able to keep and maintain were the ones that I felt like were on the same alignment or same vibe. The ones that weren't, I feel like I pulled back from those because it just wasn't it wasn't in alignment mm-hmm. like we just we weren't on the same page i was doing other things and it's not even like my influencer thing like that i i really don't try to like because that's not everybody's vibe that's not everybody's jewish i really don't try to like put that off on people or anything like that i don't think you do but you don't think you do that <laughs> maybe she did a whole like you was filming our whole trip but it, it wasn't <laughs> But I try not to like put that off on people because like I said, that's not this era. That's not everybody's thing. But even still, I don't like or want people to make me feel bad about what I do or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I feel like when people like give that type of shade, mm-hmm. then that's when I kind of be like, okay, like this is not this this relationship just really isn't aligned because they see that it's something I'm passionate about, something I'm doing, mm-hmm. but they continue to throw this like underhanding like shade about what I do so that shows me you don't support me like you don't you don't support what I do you are not hoping for positivity in my life like Vicky was saying you're mm-hmm. hoping for my downfall mm-hmm. like that's not what I want so I can't maintain that relationship I'm not even going to try to maintain that relationship mm-hmm. that's just not nothing but ever so basically the conflict or the drama yeah yeah that people bring if they are like out of alignment, out of agreement, whatever. I guess I don't want to say your answer, but do you feel like you still push forward then? And I feel like I pull back. I feel like we could be cool, we could be cordial, and I still support you. I'm fine with you know whatever you may be doing, but I just pull back. I may not tell you everything. I may not you know always be on your line. 
we may not take it as much because you already know my social media friend here. If we're going out to somewhere cute and it's a vibe, pictures have to be taken. So, but my question, okay, I'm going to take one of Vicky's questions from either earlier in this episode or last episode. What do you do when that person that you feel like is like kind of hindering your growth is somebody that's in your inner circle or close to you? Hindering my growth? Yeah, or or making it challenging. Like we hinder my growth. I got period. Period. Ain't nobody gonna do that because, like, the older I've gotten, the more I don't care. I don't care what people think. I don't care what people say. I don't care. So we reach that age. Can we? Yeah. We can say that. I really can't say that. I mean, I see. I mean, y'all. You know, I understand what y'all saying. You might care, but it's a it's at a point that you can't care. Mm-hmm. I could still care, but I I don't have the uh, luxury to. You, you mean know, you're not letting stop? Yeah, yeah. not letting me stop me. But I, especially somebody close to you. Yeah. Nah, not somebody that's not close close to you, cordial. I'm not saying you, but for me, yeah, I know someone. Somebody that's cordial, I might not care. But mm-hmm. somebody that's close to me, like of course my mother. You know, she's close to me. I love my mother to death, or my husband. If he, you know, he's close to me. If he feels some type of way, I care, but I have to keep it inside and act like I don't. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You Even care, though, but it's really yeah, not going to affect how, how you, I do things and yeah. stuff, you know? And it maybe sometimes it will, but I'm just mm-hmm. saying, like, I care, but I can't let it affect, like you said, affect yeah. me, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. But some people don't care. So, I mean, that's fine. I wish I couldn't. I wish I didn't care. I wish I could honestly say some things I don't care. But sometimes yeah. I can't say that. Yeah, I am actually the only INFJ at this table. You guys are all the same personality type, which I just get along great. It's my personality type. All of y'all personality type is ISFJ. And so um, I'm INFJ, y'all ISFJ. And most of the people around me are ISFJs, which I think is so weird. But I think it just stands to reason like that's who INFJs get along best with, I think. And the personality type, according to 16 personalities, I am an advocate and you guys are defenders, which totally makes sense because I'm the one out the group. Like Vicky said, I don't care. I do care. <laughs> I don't act like I care maybe on some stuff, but I care about a lot of little things, you know? Mm-hmm. And and a lot of times, because I care, y'all will be the ones to kind of set me straight. Like, girl, it's really not that big of a deal. Like, before we started recording, I broke your vase. And I care about that. She care now. That was like so, I mean... It, It just, it made me feel bad and I started to feel anxious and I was trying to recover and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. (laughs) Even though y'all was like, it's totally fine, but it's the small things because then also I'm in my head like, well, is she mad at me? And she just don't want to tell me that she's mad at me. Like, is she pissed that I just broke her base? Like, you know, (laughs) all of those little things. But I do understand at my big grown age. That I have to learn to get over some stuff, even though I care. I feel like those things, like I, I care. Like we, we all care, care yeah. internally, but it's right. just like again, okay, if someone's bringing something your way. Where is it coming from? If it's like your husband, if it's mm-hmm. your mom, it might be coming from a place of love. It might be different. Okay, let's reflect on it. Maybe that might change how I approach this. Maybe it won't. But if it's coming from an outside source now, mm-hmm. now you're taking it and you're like, okay, yeah, it bothers me that they said that. Mm-hmm. But is it going to change how mm-hmm. I perform in this area? Is it going to change right. what I do or what direction mm-hmm. I take? Probably not because right. that wasn't coming from a place of love. And I recognize that. I think that also takes growth to take that approach, though, because, yeah, that's true. And again, this is where I go back to my INFJ brain, because I will analyze that thing, right? Like, is that actually me? Is that how I'm coming across? No, that's not what I want. I know I need to move on, but is this a thing? You know what I'm saying? Right. (laughs) But, you know, that's, that's the part of the personality where I have to overcome and decide to move forward mm-hmm. even in that and and like you said i think it really helps to know like no this is not somebody that's necessarily in my inner circle or somebody that whatever but also helpful to know that to some people i may come off that way yeah. or that might be their perception so be, being mindful of that in the future 
And then at some point, you just can't care. Mm-hmm. You just can't. Yeah. Like today, you know, something happened at an establishment that I went to and I was offended. And normally I would kind of keep that to myself. But I talked about it on social media because I feel like that's also the part that people need to be aware of. If you're saying or doing something ignorant, people judging you standing back. Now, of course, I didn't put the person out there or record the incident or anything like that. I just relayed it on my stories. Like, please don't be this ignorant person. You can, you know, I'm just, you know what I'm saying? I keep it real. Like, you can have your own internal thoughts, but when you say that stuff out loud, because it was something like coming at black history. Okay, I'll just tell the story, guys, since you're forcing me. I was in this establishment and I was picking up what I had ordered and Nina Simone feeling good was playing. And somebody was like, oh, turn this off. An employee in the back. And a customer was like, this music is trash. Yeah, my mom's on the phone. Like, what are they listening to? The employee comes out of the back and says, yeah, I don't know what this is. We need to turn this off. And that offended me, number one, because of Black History Month. You ain't going to play with us, number one, but you also ain't going to play with us during Black History Month, right? (laughs) And so I was like, if you don't like the song, cool. If, you know, you don't know the song, also cool. But it's very ignorant to say that because the store is playing it because it's Black History Month. Mm -hmm. We don't be saying that when y'all be... And I like that song. But I'm just saying, like, I'm... I, I'm really cultured. I like all types of music. But even if that wasn't your genre or whatever, as an employee, it's pretty inappropriate to be saying it. And it's offensive. That's I, y'all love. That's, some, that's something. Yeah. I, had, I dealt with that yesterday. I took my kids to Disney on Ice. All the princesses came out. Tiana was the first princess. Of course, the white person behind me. Boom. Oh, my God. Boom. And then the other princess, he just quiet. Bella, like history, uh, 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 what yeah. Out. yeah, Rapunzel came out. He ain't say boo. Nobody else. And it's like, I sure my favorite is Elsa and, and, and Princess Tiana. You know, so they're my favorite princess. And of course, Jasmine and Ariel. But why are you saying boo to Princess Tiana? She was the she was the best one, the girl. You know, yeah. you know the new it's like Disney. Princess. It's not gonna be. It's a yeah, Disney it's a princess. character. So it's like just, she's not running for president. Yeah, it's just like <laughs> right. kids. I point that and my daughter's right behind. But we just ignore them. It's just mm-hmm. I'm not finna go because I could have easy just looked like that. But if I know if he says something, my husband's right there. It would been a whole right different situation. Yeah. But I just didn't even look back. I just was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but it is what it is. I, mean, you, I just don't get people. Some people like that just don't even get no attention. Like people are ignorant, especially since, and I feel like it's been like that ever since you know who became president. It's like a lot of people want to show their behind, and it's like you, we not in nineteen twenty eight. Sure not. We are not our grandparents. <laughs> we are not. I saw the poems. <laughs> we are. We not in it. A different. Shoot, a different genre that would literally. You got the right one out. today, honey. Yeah, so, yeah. But it just at some point, I'm not even going to get them that game. Right, right. <laughs> a whole other episode. A whole other episode. <laughs> so we're going to put it right here. It's time to talk about what I've been loving. Product recommendations, shout outs to family and friends, and overall gratitude. Let's get into it. Welcome back for another What I've Been Loving. This week, I have been loving just being here, right? Our little Valentine's Day party. Um, I've always wanted to do one of these, and so I think it was very fitting to also do this episode of the Lovish Podcast. I've been loving my king size mattress. Period. <laughs> Bob, it's been mm-hmm. getting the job done, getting me rest. You know, I love that for me. I love that for you too. <laughs> Thank you. I've been loving Smoothie King because mm-hmm. I haven't been eating right this week. <laughs> so I've been trying to get my nutrients and vitamins in. So, of course, a smoothie will help that. Come here, come here. 32 to ounce. Okay. I have been loving my. Personal growth in life. Yeah. Loving that. Love that. Love that. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this whole entire Sunday brunch series. 
I hope that all four episodes um, invited you into a place of safety and helped you consider some things that you want in your relationships or maybe that you want to change in your relationships moving forward. That is all I have for you today. If you enjoyed today's episode, share the love, share with your mama, share with your auntie, share with your best friend. Then head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a five-star review. Reviews help the podcast to grow. Well, that's all I have for you this week. I'll see you on these social media streams. Bye.